If you click on this video wanting to know about impressive human who has young PhD achievement, you need to look up these people that are holding the world's record of the youngest PhD. But of course, there is no right or wrong age to do a PhD. Dr. Charles Betty actually got his PhD when he was 95 years old. This is not a video about how my life is so glamorous, but I think for you to subscribe to this channel, you also may be curious about who are you taking advice from. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, I really want to share more about myself because the algorithm want to see a 25 year old PhD videos and I hope this will help my channel reach more of you who are bothered by managing your PhD and to be more productive and less stressed as a PhD student. So if you haven't already subscribed yet, I hope this is a good reminder that this is a channel more than what I am about, but it's more about how you can be the better version of yourself as a PhD. I have to acknowledge that there is no right or wrong answer after that line when you graduate high school and college. A PhD is made for people who want training to be a professor. On the other hand, you could invest the time to get different jobs. You'll be able to gain different workplace exposure. There's no right or wrong answer and everyone has a different financial situation, different personal passion and different problem they want to solve in lives. I recommend taking a look at your master's or bachelor's program gather information from many sources in the alumni network. But if you are still curious about how I get my PhD thesis submitted by 25, you can keep watching this video to the end. So my name is Vera. I am born and raised in Hong Kong and I graduated PhD in the University of Hong Kong. When I graduated my PhD, I was 26 years old. When I submitted my thesis, I was 25. I hope you don't think this is a clickbait. I have to comment how my high school experience is actually the seat of doing research and being a PhD candidate. So back in high school, I joined an inter-school competition. I won champion from it. It was an extracurriculum competition all over Hong Kong. All the high school have to prepare their own scientific project and they have to present it. I chose whitening toothpaste as a product to test and I questioned whether all the whitening toothpaste are doing the job. In that experience, I have to think about using human subjects. I invited four friends subjects. Friends subjects in my class. In hindsight, it was a terrible experiment. There was no consent form. We asked them to take one for each brand of the toothpaste and they go back and they promise to use that toothpaste to brush their teeth for one week. And then we compare it like the same photo with the same brightness level and compare if they really have changed the whitening scale. And on the side, we also look for key opinion leader. We interviewed two different dentists in Hong Kong and we asked them what they know about whitening toothpaste and what is inside the product. And in hindsight, this actually set the ground for me in the future because I study shell and shell is a biomineral and teeth also a biomineral. So in my PhD, I take a closer look into this process of mineralization and I also work with dentists as well. After A-level exams, I was admitted to biochemistry program. I wasn't smart enough to be in medical school. In Hong Kong, you get first degree as medical school and you don't wait for the second degree to choose that. If you are interested in studying in Hong Kong, you can go to this website to understand the Bachelor's of Science program. It's quite unique because students could take different majors in science and they can choose whatever fits the interest the most and for my case I chose biochemistry and ecology and biodiversity as my two majors. So even my test score in biology was bad, I didn't get discouraged to study biology related majors in my studies.
In my high school, I didn't get the best score in one exam in my A-level biology. I was sick during that time and I didn't perform as well. But I didn't let that discourage me from pursuing biology themed PhD. A lot of students might be discouraged by the test results. Just one test result shouldn't represent what you should choose the rest of your life. So I started biochemistry with the thinking that if I understand how disease happened, maybe I could help healthcare in a different way. But fast forward to one year later, I started an ecology course and I really enjoy my time being near the seashore, picking samples. I spent a whole summer volunteering for a research group in ecology and I remember that summer was three months right after the exam and right before class start and I was gluing barnacle with um, silicone glue. Yeah, that was the marine biology project that I was helping. That was the moment I was in proximity to graduate studies and my hobby at that time was to go to PhD defense and master's studies defense and to understand what are the research about and, and to appreciate those two years to four years of work, two years for master's, four years for PhD. And I also got intrigued by all these seminars that comes in by visiting researcher. So after having that context, I really feel inspired to do PhD because applying previous knowledge to a project sounds really exciting to me. Marine science just happened to have all the best people in the university. But I think that's how my life has been. I prefer to work with the right people. You can see in my last video how choosing the right advisor is so important. I graduated my bachelor's degree with first class honor in two different majors. First was biochemistry, second was ecology. Biochemistry was like the micro scale of biology to me and ecology is like a macro scale of biology. So you can say I loved everything about biology. And that makes me curious about this advisor because he has a track record of doing proteomics on marine animals. I chose the lab because I want to learn skills in proteomics. But ironically, I was put on a project that is nothing to do with protein because my advisor saw that I have the skills of articulating different subjects. So he put me on a project that actually has an interdisciplinary research element that I have to talk to dentists, I have to talk to engineers, and I have to come up with all this idea as a thesis. So my thesis was really challenging, but also quite exciting because I was the only person who is doing that liaison role. During my PhD, because I was the only person in that project with a very big funding, I got the luxury to be able to collaborate and travel to many different countries. That includes going to Japan for a short experiment. I went to South Carolina for like a month in the end of my PhD. I got the chance to travel to Europe and I really enjoy a lot of my PhD due to the people elements. Uh, as well as the science, but I would say mostly people because my institution, Swire Institute of Marine Science, they have the best international group. And I think there was one time we counted there were over 20, 13 nationalities and everyone had to speak in English. My English wasn't very good at the time and I felt like my graduate study has helped me to overcome my fear of speaking in English because that was really the only language that we could understand each other. So much good memory thinking about my PhD. I hope this story opens up some of your question about my background. In Hong Kong, anyone who has a first class honor degree could get directly admitted to a PhD program without the need of a master's studies. I was enrolled as an MPhil student, which is a master's degree for two years. As you can see on this table, we have a 12 months probationary period in the master's studies. And during that time, my advisor has convinced me that I should be transferring the whole project to expand it from a master's degree to a PhD degree. 
you could directly enroll in PhD program with a bachelor's degree. But when I started, I was not totally sure and also I thought I might want to enroll in foreign PhD program like in the US or in Europe. So I started with master's program but I felt like in the first year, I realized many opportunities that I could get international exposure. Even studying in Hong Kong, there's no right or wrong answer. So if you are interested in getting direct PhD program and you had a first class honor, Hong Kong could be your choice of studies. And I think Hong Kong was the best research experience I have ever had. Because of our geographical location, there are so many international scholars from everywhere over the world. I've met with people from all over Europe. America and South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, Korea, and all over China, of course. Um, so Hong Kong was in that geographical advantage that I have been listening to seminars from many different diverse topics. And that really has set the ground of my curiosity of doing my PhD and also knowing how other people may have addressed their question early on. And like I said, I started sitting in different seminars and PhD defense when I was still an undergraduate student. That was helpful for me to position myself when I started my own PhD and to understand how is the timeline looks like and what is that end product supposed to look like when people defending the thesis. So with that, I hope this sharing enlightened you um, and to understand there are different systems of PhD. So I hope this video is informative for you to understand who I am and also maybe have a consideration of studying in Hong Kong for PhD. In hindsight, I'm now 33 year old. And I have been postdoc for the past six years. And I felt like doing a PhD, it was an adventure. Life is not straightforward. Postdoc life is another video, but I hope this helps you to put things in context. Thank you for watching my video and I hope to see you the next time. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss anything that's coming up.